Hello and welcome back to another XCOM 2 War of the Chosen saving your disaster campaign. My name is Saiken and today we are going to have a campaign which I will call uh, the Grenadier Debacle where a viewer, let's call him Mr. A, has sent in this campaign his first attempt in a legendary Iron Man uh, campaign. He doesn't want to botch it. He saw the disaster campaign quote-unquote advertisements on reddit and felt uh, that that might be a good idea sent me the save game file and here we are before we start um, is an information if you do have your own saving your disaster campaign feel free to um, send that to psychon.place at gmail.com that's the way of doing it but now let's take a look at what really what, what really the disaster or problem is within this campaign so we are in the mid game kind of at a crucial moment because he has uh, spent a long amount of time so we're seeing november 13th at this point if you play legendary you should have full plasma upgrades and uh, full armor upgrades so that you are on par with a f uh, force rating 20 enemies he does have moderate weapons so um, we're rocking uh, predator armor um, instead of power armor and we are rocking uh, magnetic weapons instead of plasma weapons that already is an inherent problem because you need to play better in order to compensate for that he has a couple of uh, hero classes that he apparently uh, seems uh, to use he uh, has a Templar, uh, great, uh, great uh, selection, can congratulate you, and he even has Bladestorm on uh, the Templar, so that's a good one. He has a Skirmisher, he has a Reaper, so very solid, and the Ranger, uh, that in itself is fine. He has lost his Grenadier, so, and the only Grenadier that's uh, left over is Heavy, and Heavy um, is uh, at the risk of dying or maybe going out. Uh, so he is inherently uh, fearing sector pots and other mechanical units with a lot of armor as the grenadier is the only way to kind of shred through them. Um, I can see that uh, he might not have appreciated that sparks, the one here in particular, could be a good fire support and can also shred. But we'll build it up and we'll get him a roster plus a couple of weapon upgrades to go through that difficult uh, timeline. He admitted uh, that he is not good enough of a player yet to uh, really make sure that the heavy kind of uh, pulls through and if he loses that him or any of the other uh, top team keep in mind we're november and he's not at colonel level which tells me he has maybe skipped missions or did something else but he is not yet at colonel level anyway so a long-winded way of uh, saying we're going to make sure and teach you within this campaign of how to deal with shredding in general i think it's a very valid uh, question how do you remove armor what are the options how do we deal with it no psi operatives uh, a couple of a couple of uh, sparks definitely here and there and generally uh, a few a few interesting choices when it comes to soldiers so that looks uh, fine by the way here you do have already a shredder uh, which is a pretty sizable option um, I will go above and beyond and say we're spending 20 points to already get your shredder um, because you need that at the moment soldier abilities here uh, blade master shadow step run and gun implacable uh, untouchable damn someone has been uh, reading up on my builds like it uh, that is fabulous uh, what are we looking here long watch uh, yeah, I would have taken lightning hands. Death from above is okay. I would have potentially gone lightning hands, quick draw, and then face off, um, and uh, fan fire. But it's okay. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Sniper is still good. Uh, oh boy. Ah, oh, the color. Yeah, this here is a mistake. Um, don't go for combat protocol over medical protocol uh, but we will be able to rectify that uh, does he have a training center no but in 10 days he does 
Let's uh, take a look at the research. He's currently researching uh, the sector pod. I already uh, changed that, but wanted to do it on camera. We're definitely wanting powered armor. Sector pod research just gives you upgraded gremlins. You need armor, buddy, and you need uh, upgraded weapons as well. Uh, he's out of Valerium, uh, has decent supplies. And if you look at the engineering, a couple of things uh, come to mind. Uh, definitely a lack of blue screen rounds, so a few more might be helpful. Uh, no flashbang grenade is a big question mark, uh, so that we need to take a look into. And, but I can see he was trying to kind of get the weapons upgraded, uh, so that in itself, the squad upgrades here definitely need to happen. But it'll come over time. So our first problem to solve is how do we get uh, how do we get proper um, resources on the overall map? You can see there are a couple of uh, things uh, here. He has. Uh, munition expert if you uh, would take Africa resistance network uh, which is great we should try to get that because it'll give us instant uh, connection with everything else live fire training that is a good fallback because if you're afraid to lose certain classes live fire training is actually the way to go um, and here we do have weapon modifications inside knowledge weapon modifications improved that's actually not bad and all grenade projects immediately improved. So given that there is so much in the world uh, that is unexplored, if I was to play the campaign, um, I would potentially go for resistance network <coughs> to then save time and uh, get all of the other um, continent bonuses. Given that the guy is struggling with keeping his grenadiers alive, we're actually going for South America and we're going to get the live fire training. So that's one of our targets. Um, next up, uh, we want to see okay. what's available in the black market. Got uh, solid 18 Intel, wow, fabulous. Good, before we do that though, <clears throat> there's Intel here, resistance contact. Uh, that's typically good, but at the moment he was apparently making contact here. Uh, don't want to ruin his overall plan, but I think given his problems, he's actually better off uh, doing something else. So superior perception, great. 50 intel, definitely worth it. But even more great would be to have the alloys here, uh, the alarium crystals in particular, because buddy, you're running out of uh, alarium crystals. Do we have anything else? Making contact, intel resistance contacts. Hmm. Okay, I tell you what, we're getting that extra resistance contact so that we can get the uh, entirety of South America. And I hope that uh, the game will notice that we have zero Ilarium and will give us either a scan or a mission. Oh, well, I, should, uh, skip, uh, I shouldn't skip missions, so we're actually going to go onto our first mission right away. Thanks for reminding me. So VIP, it is, um, VIP mission it is, let me just uh, get a team together real quick. Okay, so here we are. I got a base team together out of uh, the four basic classes. I would say if you're struggling with the game, that's an easy way of just getting things in order. You want to have the core um, classes, um, specialist, ranger, grenadier, and sharpshooter all four uh, typically are uh, enough to do a mission by themselves i took a tank uh, sheng zung our templar with us and i'm trying to level that extra uh, spark a couple of uh, notes here i think uh, the spark in terms of abilities uh, you should always try to go for rainmaker over strike strikes okay but the Spark really excels at AOE damage in the heavy weapons, so Rainmaker definitely is a nice to have. Uh, we already reviewed uh, all of the other builds with the exception of uh, the heavy, 
I think here uh, Shredder is correct. I would almost go Demolition over Suppression because you seldom have the time to suppress. And I would go Heavy Ordinance over Holo Targeting, although I can see why people would go uh, Holo Targeting. But typically the class here is for cover removal and in some cases also for shredding. But since today's uh, mission or today's uh, campaign is really focusing on how to deal with shredding uh, targets, we'll actually go with that. So a couple of infos here. Sparks have an innate ability to shred on their weapons. So uh, from the uh, second upgrade of the weapon onwards, uh, which it already has, it can shred enemies. We do have shredding on the heavy and theoretically we would have shredding on the Reaper as well. But for now uh, we have two times shredding. That's more than enough. I built a third a pair of blue screen rounds for the sniper and I also um, built a flashbang. That all needs to be enough in order to get this one rolling. Good time to land. By the way, I recolored uh, some of your operatives, dear Mr. A. So you gotta live with that. Okay, we're concealed. It's a good start. Uh, let's take a good look. 12 uh, turns. Uh, this is where most of the fighting will happen and we got an exit. It's actually not bad, uh, but we already know that there are quite a few enemies here. So, you gotta play carefully. Templar moves up. Templar moves up a second time. Very good. Spark begins to move up. Uh, fabulous. Okay. Ranger moves up. Uh, Wolverine, our sniper, moves up. Specialist moves up and the heavy... Begins to take the low ground here. Doesn't have Salvo yet. Maybe we're even putting him on uh, the top. Oh yeah, one of the things that I also forgot. I put the advanced aim uh, personal combat sim onto the heavy. If you ever find yourself having a uh, personal combat sim uh, that gives you aim, then the heavy is uh, the right um, way to go. They are notoriously bad in hitting uh, things and they need the aim more than any other class. So, little pro tip right there. Go and get yourself uh, some aim on the heavies. Okay, I think we're just going to stay here for now. That's the VIP. Fair enough. We'll do. Just need to make sure that we're not that we're not going to trigger anything in terms of hacking let's see what uh, do we have theoretically speaking oh distraction behave well that is a great reward that is a great reward okay let's hope some of uh, the enemies will disperse a bit into different directions because we got one two three packs over here um seeing that that is not the case we're doing the next best, best sensible thing which is don't mess around with an entire battalion worth of enemies and instead we're going over here Okay, uh, he's, he can still see those three enemies down there. That's not good. Um, how about, 
Yeah, I don't want to lose more time here. Can't position ourselves down here. That would trigger. We could, matter of fact, trigger ourselves by simply going here and then starting. Codex would run away. Um, and that's one of the very few times where it would then trigger blade storm on top of it. Uh, so that would be one option. The other option is to actually attack uh, the stun lancer, likely causing a second pack to trigger. The third one, maybe not. I tell you what, it's not the worst idea overall. I don't want to spend a lot of turn uh, a lot of turns dealing um, with repositioning we're going in there's potentially something that if you are not a hundred percent sure how to play the game that you shouldn't do a pretty aggressive first move Sun Lancer is getting hit into focus then blade storm another hit go yep bring it on well so much for just pulling two packs right at least the third pack over here is not pulled but we're okay so far Good, let's take a good look at uh, what we would want to do. We have blue screen rounds and we have a lot of uh, codices uh, that we want to take our anger up on. Sniper eliminates one of them. Before then, Nicely hitting the other one and uh, the um, Archon with the disorientation. Couple of advantages here. This Codex cannot clone itself anymore. Archon cannot use uh, Blazing Pinions. We're going into Overdrive. This will be a kill. Plus uh, damage, which is good. And we're looking at what? A couple of potential hits. Okay, cool. Uh, we did not have blue screen rounds loaded here. But we did have blue screen rounds here. Oh yeah, we did. Uh, don't want to actually move too far uh, to the front. This here would be uh, mm, would be a nice flanking position into hitting, but it comes at the risk of the Spectre moving in and Shadow cloning us, which we again don't want to do. Already moved uh, the heavy. Decent chance of hitting the Codex and taking them out, but they are uh, they are currently actually disabled. So might as well um, start to soften up the Spectre. Eighty percent shot, unfortunately missed. Um, let me think. Disabled, sort of still enabled. Can't really do much about uh, the codex over here unless we're hitting it. Uh, what I would want to do is aid protocol for the ranger because he's going to get himself into trouble soon. 
and that could be a kill. Very unlucky here. Nine points of damage. Uh, we can definitely work with that. But before we're uh, choosing either of that, there are a couple of options that we have left over for us. And I want to showcase some of them. Um, just try to get rid of the different uh, codices uh, here. That's one. Frostbite prevents him from uh, separating, uh, aka cloning itself. So if the cr uh, crit wouldn't have happened, he would not uh, have uh, cloned himself. Still got a bit of a problem over here. Got a problem with the Spectre as well. I mentioned we wanted to take the Spectre. This one Codex unfortunately will teleport in uh, and will Psionic bomb us, which means we will need to move next turn. Not optimal at all. Uh, the next big uh, biggest uh, threat is indeed the Spectre. There's the Shadowbound. Nasty combination, by the way, Shadowbound into into Psionic Bomb. Yeah, complete surprise. Who would have guessed, right? And we're fighting against yet another pack. Fabulous. The Haywire Protocol actually would be fun if we could pull it off. See, if you had Healing Protocol, you could actually uh, do the uh, proper revival here, uh, which would be so much easier. Um, unfortunately, you do don't have that, which uh, makes this whole thing here way more difficult than it needs to be. Good, let's free our soldier. Hashtag free willy. That's the one time when the strike actually comes in handy. We're going to go out of the immediate zone. We're going to uh, damage and fall damage the guy. There you go. Two extra points of damage, like it. Well, lucky him, I would say, but we do have a couple of uh, tricks up our sleeves, some of which include just getting the enemies down. And we have a hair trigger, 
triggered just at the right time. Uh, by the way, thanks to Implacable, we can even move. Uh, almost like a, not almost, it's a fr uh, another free turn available for us. Move over here. And you can see he's he would be dealing with uh, quite a heavy armor. The reaction here is to use either of those two. Well, we needed uh, uh, to save up his friend to actually deal with the mech. But there are other options available. One of which is brute force and just get him down. Another one is Haywire Protocol and to see if we could take him over. 33% is, I regret to inform you, not good enough uh, to justify that. I am not moving up because of the mini rockets that could hit us and we don't want that to happen. We got Reaper, so we could theoretically start cleaning up <coughs> a couple more things. So I think it's time to, to actually dish out some damage. Comet Protocol in this case wouldn't be too bad, I suppose. We know there's another pack somewhere back here. But respectfully, we need to deal with all of uh, the enemies. Good, full cover, thanks to Implacable. Don't even need to, to do run and gun. Try to hit the Archon. I was tempted to use high ground, but unfortunately we missed the 70% shot. Well, it is what it is. Another option now would be to actually regain uh, action points, but this here just prevents it from happening. I could move up further down here to at least uh, be in range. For the hack. But I like the high ground, it's actually not bad. This here is 11 to 13 points of damage. This here is 9, effectively 12 to uh, 12 to 15 points, so common protocol would be a bit uh, more damage. Uh, we got an outloader, so no need to uh, to reload and I think we're just simply starting with combat protocol typically not my preferred choice we continue with pretty substantial damage down to six hit points uh, let me just double check something real quick yeah that's good enough we're going into Reaper. We will take one uh, shot from the Overwatch. Well, that that was w very unlikely to hit to begin with, but okay. Staying in full cover here. Could get the officer um, together with the explosion, which wouldn't be too bad. Uh, Archon is very likely doing blazing pinions. The other option would be Archon. Um, and then hoping 
Yeah, we couldn't get him fully down. Let's go for the officer, 246. Won't be killed by the explosion, but heavily injured. There's the next um, sonic bomb. There are the blazing pinions. And there's the stupid sonic bomb. Oh. We decide for no stupidity this time. Okay, I see. I see how it is. Ready to engage. Good chance of killing it. to full cover. I want to be dealing with the explosions. And then Shadowfall. More concealed, but fabulous. Good, running and gunning. I'm trying to trigger others. Good hair trigger into a reload. And we could still reposition, which is good. Moving, to position. Moving far enough away. to waste any more uh, focus on the Archon. Beautiful. It's just hilarious how he always dodges, or how they always dodge. Can't rent them, unfortunately. Vault wouldn't be that efficient. Moving closest so that once he comes down, we can actually hit him with Bladestorm. And then deal as much damage as we can. If you are resorting back to the auto pistol of uh, the Templar, you know that something is typically not working out very well. There's the blade storm I was hoping for. No kill, but still okay. Right. Tell you what, get up and get back out there. that wasn't halfway bad. Heal, shot, kill. Very good. Does that trigger anyone? No, it's just a VIP, which tells me. It's a good time to start moving. I see the path. Uh, moving over here because we want high ground with a uh, with a spark. Overwatch. 
Uh, still one more pack. And the moment that we are getting the VIP, we will definitely uh, start triggering reinforcements. Good, given that that hasn't happened yet, I'm happy with moving everybody forward. The advantage of pulling the entire map in one go is you don't have to deal with problems later. Of course it was sarcasm, you should try to pull one pack at a time. And we're carrying this unit, thank you. Move, 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 and move. And we're pretty much good. There are the potential reinforcements. I haven't even used the sweet, sweet hack to regain our, all of our action points. Good, VIP extracts first. Um, a little pro tip here, elsewise the mission has a chance that it fails. Good, and it wasn't the cleanest of all missions, but it was uh, one that uh, was fun. Three packs with uh, under-equipped soldiers made for a good start in this disaster campaign. I can understand why he uh, felt uh, that the campaign is slowly but surely getting out of his hands. We will need to do a few adjustments with uh, his prime team. But that was to be expected. So, you definitely want medical protocol. You definitely want to have revival protocol. Unless it's a huge mistake, I can't stress that enough. Um, revival protocol would have been a game winner. Medical protocol into revival protocol into field medic always. No exception, no ifs and buts and whens. Maybe if you're running two specialists in a single team and you want one to be quote unquote a hacker, then I can see that. Threat assessment, fantastic ability, definitely go to here. Hello. And we got ourselves Intel, we're ready for expansions. There's even more Intel, and eh, not needed at the moment. Uh, we are getting more resistance contacts. And then we want to make uh, contact with South America. Okay, well, it wouldn't be XCOM if Central wouldn't uh, make that comment. Ooh, I see you do have uh, the Hunter on lockdown. Okay, well, maybe we're going to pay him a visit. A uh, small weapon upgrade for snipers is not a bad idea. casualties during that last covert action. But our troops will all recover after some well-earned rest. Commander, you'll be happy to hear our most recent... Sabotage! That is fabulous. That is really good. Minus one avatar progress at the end of every month. That is so good. Okay, what else do you have? Vector rifles, additional weapon slot. Not bad. Dodge plus ten. And an engineer. Fabulous. Locate stronghold.
Uh, oh, mental fortitude. Oh, mental fortitude. That is good as well. Boy, you get all of the good stuff here. Uh, we're going to go for mental fortitude. Thank you. Put the low uh, ranking soldiers in there. Okay. And, uh, that is Metal Fortitude. Fabulous. Uh, that is one of the best resistance orders. Period. Got another resistance contact. Alien Alloy is not what we need. We need um, Alarium here. Game is a bit stingy on the Alarium. So next up we're building a radio relay here. And South America is uh, the place to go. Got a couple of new targets. Uh, Advent padding, not cool, but okay. Protect the device, na 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 na. Um, you know, an extra engineer couldn't hurt, could it? And a lot of faceless uh, enemies also tells me that we can get mimic beacons, which you would need. So this is uh, the mission to go, but that'll happen in our next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the Saving the Disaster campaigns. We're giving it a couple more spins uh, until this one here is in safe territory. See you in the next episode. Take care, guys, and have a good one. Bye-bye.